Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we watch hundreds of poker vlogger hands and bring you 10 of the best. In this week's episode, we've got a WSOP circuit ring, we've got perfect hands that you didn't want to be dealt in the first place, and a little bit of Brad Owen magic. So without further ado, let's make a start. At number 10 this week, and PK Poker, Philip is playing in his 2 euro, 2 euro home game in Germany. And have I mentioned before my feelings about running it twice? The action continues to be great and you will see this in this hand. We are on the button with pocket queens and the hijack before us raises to 15. I 3 bet here, I keep it on the smaller side and only 3 bet to 40. It falls to the big blind who decides to jam. He has reloaded for 200 and he slides them into the middle again. But that's not all. The hijack re-jams for 300 effective. He has us covered. I go into the tank for a little bit, but ultimately think that short-handed and especially on this action-heavy table, it would be too tight to full pocket queens here, so I stick in the call as well. But before we go to a run out, my two opponents ask if we want to run it multiple times. At first, they thought about two times. I'm okay with that. Then they wanted to run it three times. Mm, I'm not a big fan of it and actually I wanted to run it once. But because both of my opponents are for three times this time, I'm not the type of guy who declines those wishes so we we'll run it three times. We show our hands and our opponent in the big blind shows pocket aces and the hijack shows pocket eights. So we need some queens here and in the first run and the first flop we actually see a queen. <sighs> Damn me, why I can't decline those wishes. Anyway, we hold up on this one. The other two boards are in favor for the big blind, who holds up with his aces. Actually, we don't lose that much money because of the sideboard, but yeah. At nine this week, and Poker Face Ash is at the Talking Stick Resort right here in Scottsdale, Arizona. She's playing in a 2-3 game and manages to be dealt the perfect hand that she didn't really want to be dealt in the first place. So when I sat down, I looked and noticed that I was under the gun, and normally I wait for the button to pass before jumping in, but the dealer dealt to me without asking, and that was totally fine. I didn't want to make a big deal of it, and so I took my cards, and we're going to waste no time getting started here because my very first hand I get dealt under the gun is pocket aces. I look around thinking this must be a joke, but I end up raising to $10. It folds all the way around to the cutoff, and I don't know anything about this player, but he decides to 3-bet me, and he makes it $40. Stacks were 500 effective to start the hand because he has me covered and I just sat down. And silently, I'm jumping for joy inside. Get your numbers up. I had to get my numbers up. Folds back around to me and this is where I think I make a slight mistake on my sizing here. I think I should be raising to about $100, maybe $105, somewhere in that range, maybe even $110, but I decided to go for the size of $120, which I think is a little bit too big here for a 4-bit. Regardless, he decides to flat here, so we're going heads up to a pretty big pot already. So we see a flop of Queen of Hearts, Seven of Diamonds, Eight of Diamonds. Unless he has exactly pocket queens, I don't think his four bet calling range consists of much that hits this board. And also having the Ace of Diamonds, I feel very comfortable with my hand. And the only thing that really beats me right now is a set of queens, which if we're getting coolered here, then we're getting coolered. I would imagine he could also flat a hand like Ace Queen suited and possibly Kings, although I really think that we would have got it all in pre if he had Kings. But honestly, you never really know at these stakes. So now I have to pick a betting size and I should be betting about a quarter pot here, I think in this four bet pot out of position, but I went a little bit bigger than I should have. I probably should have put out a bet of $80, but either way I made it $120 and he actually raises and he puts out a raise of what I think was about $275. I didn't really pay too much attention because I knew my whole stack was going in regardless. I thought it was very close to covering my stack. So after he raises, I'm very curious what he has, but I hope our aces are good. So I slide in the rest of my chips and and the cards run out. The river does bring another queen, so that did concern me a little bit if he did somehow peel with a hand like king queen, ace queen, but no flushes got there, so I hoped my hand was safe, and I flip it over, and he gives us the nod, checks his cards one last time, tosses them into the muck, and says, nice hand, and we get a full double up, our very first hand here at the 2-3 at Talking Stick. At eight this week, and we're back with Philip, PK Poker, but this time he's playing in a 2-5 game in Prague in the Czech Republic. 
He's at the King's Casino. And this is really the kind of hand where trips on the board really help. The next hand is the biggest hand I played in all three days of the King's trip. So here we are in the low jack with pocket fives. It folds to me and I raise to 15. The cutoff behind me three bets to 45. The button behind him decides to cold call the three bet and it folds back to me. I'm getting a very good price now, even though I'm out of position. I call the 45 to set mind here and we go to a flop three ways. The dealer rolls over five, Four, four. So we flop a full house in a three bed pot in a bloated pot already. I'm first to act and of course I check to my opponents. Luckily for us, the cutoff decides to C bet. He bets 50. The button decides to call. Now I have a decision. Do I want to race here or play it a little tricky and just call? It was 50 50 in my mind to be honest, but ultimately at the end I decided to race here because all of the involved players are at around 800 euro deep. So I want to build a pot now and I raise to 150. The cutoff folds but the button decides to call. Pretty good news, so we see a turn. The turn brings in another 4. So there are trips on the board right now and I'm not sure if that's a good card or a bad card for me. I really hope my opponent has an overpair now and should feel pretty confident. I decide to play it a little tricky here and make it look like I have a combo draw or maybe a flush draw that I'm now afraid of the trips on board. So I check to my opponent. Unfortunately my opponent checks back. We see the king of clubs on the river and it completes the front door flush draw. Now I really hope my opponent has a king. The question is now how much I want to bet. I'm really nervous and I think my hands are a little shaky at this moment. I thought about jamming but then ultimately decide to bet 375. Before we see what our opponent will do here in this hand, guys smash that subscribe button and leave a like under the video. It would help me and the channel a lot. And yeah, yeah, now let's see what my opponent does. He snap calls. Oh my god, I turn over pocket fives and he rolls over ace seven of clubs. I don't mind, I love to see that he called this bet and my check back on the turn really earned us some money here on the river and we are good and happy now. At seven this week and Andrew Nimi is playing in the 2-5 game at the Lodge a club that he part owns in Austin, Texas. And even without the straddle, I'm not sure that this hand would have played any differently. So you remember those reasonable stakes that I mentioned earlier? Turns out that didn't last too long at all. The boys are straddling big in this next hand, turning this 2-5 game into a 2-5, 10, 20, 40, 80 game for this hand. And there's just no way that I'm going to be the guy to not put out the next straddle here at the lodge. Andrew never said no to a gamble. Let's go. I gotta say, I have not looked into this spot too much. <laughs> So that means I quintuple straddle for $160. If I was a professional YouTuber, I'd say, what's the biggest amount you've ever straddled for? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. Action folds around to the player in seat one who, in a $160 big blind game, is a bit on the shallow side. He rips it in for less than two big blinds. That's two $160 big blinds. Before action folds over to me, of course, since it's not even a full raise, I make the call in the dark. Andrew's gonna follow Thank God. God. I, I hope so. It's like a miracle. Oh, that's right. Can I pray first? Let me first. Oh, you had Luca? No. Oh, I will. You. Oh, 258. It's not even a valid raise. Oh, let's see what we got here. Oh wait, how much is it? 258. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's pretty little tiny farm. Thank you. Yeah, there's no reason. Yeah, yeah let's let's split your hand at the end, maybe. That's what we have at the end. At the end. At the end. Yeah, still have luck. Where's his hand? Nice. Two fifty. All right. Gamble. It's not ace king. It's a lot worse than ace king. I had five goose off. Two pair. Two pair. <laughs> Number six this week and close to broke is at the Lodge in Austin playing in a 5-10 game. And it's so satisfying when you're able to beat a three-barrel bluff. 
In this next hand, we find ourselves in the triple straddle for $80. It folds over to the big blind who decides to raise for $250. The $40 straddler decides to make the call, and I look down at A7 diamonds. I mean, can we have asked for a better hand in the straddle? I mean, to be honest, if we did, it'd probably be unfair. So I decide to make the call, considering somehow we are in position against all these players, and we're off to a flop that comes Ace-5 King with two spades and a diamond. There is a seabed here from the player in the big blind to $350. I will let you guys know that the player that is in the big blind is somebody that loves to get into the mix of things. $2,000 flips that were blind happen very frequently with this player, and he was here to mix things up. No, we're not talking about mixing it up. I think that's one of the players that plays on the lodge. But when it folds over to me, I don't think I have any other decision besides just calling here. And that's what I go ahead and do. $350 to go, and we're off to a turn card. It comes with three of clubs. Our opponent decides to double barrel to $450. If I was good on the flop, I can't imagine that I'm bad on this turn card. And if I am, the board can still pair to bail me out against every other ace. So when that's the case, and considering how likely my opponent is to bluff, I decide to just make the call. And we are off to a river looking to improve or at least not face a massive bet. And the river comes a five of diamonds. Luckily, now we improved to two pair with a king kicker. So I don't think I can be folding for any price on this river. When my opponent leads out for $900, I think this is the easiest call we've had in our entire session. I decide to make the call fairly quickly. We don't need to Hollywood whatsoever. I am not here to slow roll anyone. And my opponent shows pocket nines. What an outstanding situation for us as we caught off a triple barrel bluff in a massive, massive pot, bringing in over a $3,500 pot back home to Los Angeles. Number five this week, and Mariano is at the bike in Bell Gardens, California. He's in a massive 2550 cash game, and yep, you saw that right. His opponent is all in, blind, for $4,000. At this point in the night, Raj had been running pretty bad and decided he was sick of it all. It was time for him to go all in blind for about $4,000. As you guys can see here, he does announce all in without checking his cards. And well, I'll just let this one play out. Wow, Raj is all in again. All right, Raj. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, God. I don't know. I'm asking him to let me. Yeah, no. I, I, can, I can tell you that. We gotta be Casper does not like seeing Mario. Okay, who wants to Oh, Casper did fold. Okay. I would have saw sweat it. Yeah, yeah. I thought he called. Raj or Mariano calls. Ace 4, here we go. Ace 4 versus 10 7. Can Raj win again? It's not bad. I gotta hit a bear. I definitely hit a bear. I won. No, no bear. No? What the fuck? Uh, yeah. you me and you took it away. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately for Raj, it was not meant to be, but you gotta give the man credit. Not a lot of people willing to jam 4k blind. Number four, and Brad Owen is playing at the Bellagio in Vegas. He's in a 5-10 game, and you need to watch right to the end for a little bit of Brad Owen magic. An hour later we get the opportunity when we've got Ace King offsuit under the gun. I raised a 30. The dude who beat us in the previous hand, three bets to 130. He started with 1,065 total. I'm happy to get it in against him for that amount if I need to. I four bet to 500 to either take this down without seeing a flop, or to essentially force the hijack to jam if he wants to stick around. If he just flats, he'll have about half a pot size bet left in the stack, so surely he won't do that. This man is a square peg that I tried to put into a round hole. He calls for 370 more for the sole purpose of making my commentary wrong that I obviously do weeks after the session is finished. We're heads up in a four bet thousand dollar pot out of position. We might need some help. There's no better way to get that than by asking for you guys to smash the like button on the count of three for some extra run good. We haven't done this in a long time. Ready? One, two, three, the flop comes ace eight seven rainbow we've got top top and what's very likely the best hand with my opponent having such a short stack i don't want to give him a reason to fold if he has queens or jacks i super down bet to 150. with implied odds he's almost getting the right price to call with a pocket pair but i'm betting on him not being able to drill a set on the turn this move also gives him some rope to jam as a bluff if he thinks my bet looks extremely weak 
If he has ace-king, we'll unfortunately be chopping. If he has ace-queen or another worse ace, we shouldn't have any trouble stacking him. The opponent is perplexed, and I don't blame him. It's pretty clear to me that he doesn't want to fold for this small of a sizing, but he doesn't want to call without an ace in his hand either. He's probably thinking about how he won't be allowed back in his home game if he folds right now while getting nearly 8-1 to one on the call. The hijack matches the bet and only has 415 in his stack. He's chest deep in quicksand and needs some help before he gets completely buried. The turn is the 10 of hearts. It's possible that the opponent drilled a set. I can't be too concerned about that with effective stack sizes being so small, especially in relation to the size of the pot. I only have one move. Luckily, I don't get snap called, so I either for sure have the winner, or this is going to be the most epic slow roll of all time. The opponent is looking at what's in the pot, then looking at his stack, then looking back at what's in the pot. There's 1730 out there, and he only has 415 in his stack. Well over a minute goes by, then the hijack finally slides his chips in the middle to make the call. This is a big all-in pot. I'm not sure what we have to fade. There's almost no way that we've got the check mark yet, though. The dealer puts out the nine of hearts, completing not only the backdoor flush draw, but there are four of the straight out there as well. I at least add the ace of hearts, making it a lot less probable that I'm up against a flush. I show my hand first, not totally loving it because Jax is a very reasonable hand that the opponent could have, which is now beating us. The hijack doesn't appear to be too happy. It looks like he's going to muck his cards face down. Then he says, Hey guys, before I return these cards to the dealer, I want to show everyone the sick finger tap dance routine that I've been working on. Let's play that back. I was doing it with two fingers, but I can also do it with just one. I know hundreds of thousands of people are going to watch this vlog, which made it the perfect opportunity to showcase my skills. I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed, but I like my act a little better where I make every one of his chips disappear and eventually become part of my stack. We're up about 800 with plans of adding to that amount. Top three in week six. And we kick things off at number three with your boy Ethan, Rampage Poker, who's playing in a $300 No Limit Hold'em tournament at the Hilton in Aruba. And let's see, can these offsuit connectors give Ethan his World Series of Poker circuit ring? This next hand starts out with 8-7 offsuit on the button. I'm in position with two cards next to each other, so I decide to limp here and make the call for 20000 And this big line player checks his option, so we're off to see a free flop of Jack-8-5 to hearts. With middle pair, he checks it over to me, and I can go either way with a check or bet. I decided to check this one back. The turn is a seven, what a bank, another two pair holding. He checks for a second time and let's go for some value. Hopefully, I bet out 45,000. And upon this 45,000 bets, this player has about 200-ish thousand in front and in his stack. He goes all in. I snap call, announce my two pair. Come on, let's hold to win this tournament. When I announce my hand, he says that he's drawing dead with 3-5 offsuit. I just need to fade one of two fives remaining in the deck, and the ring is ours. The river comes a jack. Let's go. Nice playing with you, Adam. It was a pleasure meeting you and talking to you throughout this entire tournament who watches the channel. Really good run to Adam, and big credit to him for surviving with a short stack and placing second here. But I'm happy to win. There are sparkles flying in the air for celebration. And I take down my third ever significant tournament of my life, winning some more hardware. And I can claim that the WSOP circuit ring is mine. Number two this week. And Rob Rickerman is playing in the 510 game at the Bellagio in Vegas. And don't forget, just like all of the other players that we feature, if you want to see Rob's full video, Click on the link right down there in the description box. Exactly one orbit later, I'm back under the gun with pocket sevens. I open for $30. The hijack calls and it's back to the same player I just got with the quads in the cutoff. He sticks in the three bet to 120, folds to me. Right as I put in the call, he says, I'm thinking to myself, well, I hope so. So I make the call. The hijack calls as well. Three ways to a flop of 10, 7, 5, rainbow. Are you kidding me? This time I check because they saw how I played the quads leading right out with a bet. So I check here. Next player checks. It's to the original Razor. He fires out a bet of $220. 
middle set here, rainbow board. There are some straight draws out there, but no flush draws to worry about. So I decide to flat here, hoping to bring in the other opponent. He does make the laydown though, however, and we go heads up to an eight of spades on the turn. A few gut shots get there, and I'm losing to two bigger sets, but uh, pretty sure we're still good here. I check, and he goes into the tank for a bit. Looks like he's thinking about jamming here, but uh, ends up slowing down, checks back. Off to the river card, looking for a blank here, and holy shit, it's another seven. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? I think for a little bit, about an amount he might be able to call this time, um, instead of trying to go for max value here. So. I decide on a bet of 330. He snap calls and. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. Oh, nasty. He called it, right? That's crazy. That's crazy. Teach me, teach me. Seat one, teach me, teach me. Can't really teach this, just straight dumb luck. I think showing that last hand though might have got me some action here as it's pretty unbelievable I, I have it again. And at number one this week, a new player being featured for the very first time on Suited Aces Poker is Kyle Fischel. Kyle is playing in a 2-5 game at the Orange City Racing and Car Club down there in Orange City, Florida. And this is Kyle flopping quads on what becomes a seriously scary board. I look down at pocket jacks. An early position player raises to $25. There's one caller. I'm in the hijack. I'm not going to just call with jacks. Definitely going to put in the larger size three bet, especially when the other two opponents have very short stacks. I'd like to just get all the money in right now. I raise to $110. Well, the button calls. The preflop aggressor decides to call and the middle position limper decides to fold. So we're actually three ways to a flop, where deja vu, we flop quads. Even better, the pre-flop aggressor jams for $125. Now in this spot, I have to tank for, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds to hopefully get the third player in or maybe even back raise because I definitely don't want to seem too eager and push him out of the pot when hopefully he could have some Broadway cards or some flush cards and be willing to put in a call and maybe build a dry side pot. Luckily when I call, the button decides to call as well. So we're three ways to a turn card, one all in. which is the nine of clubs. Actually a, a nightmare turn card for me because I previously had quad jacks cracked by a king high straight flush in my life and thoughts of that are somehow creeping in. But either way, if you have a straight flush, I guess you get all my money. So to start to build the side pot, I bet $200. Hopefully a regular flush will be able to pay it off. Maybe a king queen that's not of clubs, something like that. But the button decides to fold. So against the all-in player, quads is definitely good. And this time it actually held up and we got the $500 high hand bonus. So that's nice. I had 16, quad jacks for the king. Wouldn't that just have sucked if you flop quads and end up getting beaten by a straight flush? As it turns out, though, everything went according to plan. So that's it for this week, folks. Thank you, as always, for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, if you want to see the full video from everybody featured, there's a link down in the description box below. Until next week, good luck at the felt.